Greetings everyone! This video has also been several months in the making, primarily due to loss of inspiration following Apple's mess up with image capture app. Okay, how would you feel if after pushed upon you update, your normal routine was not only broken, but some of your footage has been eaten by the app without recovery option? Exactly. So I needed time to get myself together and shoot some missing footage before getting back at making videos. At times this video may seem incoherent, so just bear with me on this one. Here we will talk and try to learn something about this little wire locating device. It is relatively inexpensive compared to its higher-end counterparts. Actually, it's way cheaper than some of the other stuff out there. On the box, we find few written statements such as frequencies and amplitudes that we are going to put to the test later in this video. The kit is supplied with this fabric pouch that is pretty adequate and holds everything you need, except for the manual, of course. If I had found and read this manual earlier, it would save me some time figuring out how to use this device. The manual is written in a readable and understandable English, for the most part, and it actually is not very bad. Kind of impressive. Both transmitter and receiver will interlock together and can be carried by this belt clip. Although I don't know about it, it doesn't feel reliable or strong enough. Okay, let's look at the transmitter first. It is held together by five Torx 8 Securia screws. Where is the fifth one? Oh no, not that one. It's under the battery cover. Will you look at this? They actually put a brass insert to hold the clip screw. Maybe it's not completely hopeless after all. The PCB looks and feels unordinary and contains a mystery chip, a ceramic resonator, and few generic components. The ceramic resonator here provides base frequency of 455 kHz. This frequency is called intermediate frequency and is just under the standard AM frequency range. The mystery chip is probably some sort of modulator creating this 900 Hz audible signal. We will take a closer look at it in a couple of minutes. There is no apparent or serious galvanic isolation except maybe for these little capacitors. This is why they were not to connect it to hot wires. This is also why it is so inexpensive. Judging by the inside of the case, it is clear that this same case is used for different applications, another one of which is probably a network and phone cable tester. This is why we have these markings on the shell. And, of course, these alligator clips are not RJ11 type connectors. Well, I think enough said about the transmitter Let's take a look at the receiver. The receiver inside features some excitement of me trying not to break any wires by accident. There is a built-in speaker and an LED light. On the PCB we find a couple of mystery chips and peculiar adjustable devices 
which are either capacitance or inductance variable devices, which in turn means that we are dealing with amplitude modulation system. The antenna is most likely a coil with ferrite core, just like a regular AM antenna, and measures less than one ohm of resistance. To perform analysis of operation, I will be using my oscilloscope. I bought it on eBay real cheap because it wasn't working. Then I fixed it and I hope to be a proud owner of this fine instrument for years to come. When transmitter is hooked up to channel 1 of the scope, we can measure the wave period and amplitude. Furthermore, if we play with period per division switch and trigger settings, we can observe a definite pattern of the signal changing its amplitude. That mystery chip is most likely responsible for switching on and off the carrier frequency with audible repeatability. We take measurements of peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the signal as well as the period of the pattern. Here is rather an extreme example of amplitude modulation because the base frequency is completely cut off between cycles. We will use a piece of audio cable with 3.5 mm jack to take readings from receiver side. As expected, the receiver output signal follows what is being transmitted. We get heavily clipped at 0.78 volt sine wave with exact same frequency as modulated by transmitter. Interestingly enough, the transmitter signal peak to peak voltage increases slightly when adjustment in is turned down, but not nearly close to 15 volts claimed. It turns out that the audible signal encoded by the transmitter is only about 810 Hz and the base frequency is a little over 448 kHz. While somewhat disappointing, these parameters are not as crucial as the voltage of the transmitter which turns out to be several times smaller than what is being claimed by the box. Based on these observations, I decided not to test the maximum distance, especially since I don't have a wire of such length. I think it is reasonable to take the maximum distance claim with a grain of salt. Okay, I started all this for a reason to find hidden in the yard irrigation solenoid valves, right around the same time I was fixing my well pump. First group of three valves I found long time ago, and it was quite easy and obvious. But then I was at a loss. So this wire finder came in very handy in helping me locate those valves. I connected red and black wires of the transmitter to questionable zone wire and ground respectively. The irrigation cable goes from the garage where the timer is located through crawl space, through basement all the way to the opposite side of the house, then just disappears on the ground. Because the most sensitive area of the antenna is oriented radially, I had to drag it on the ground from side to side and follow the signal coming from the hidden cable.
At some point, I thought the signal had stopped in this one spot, so I started digging. There was no valves there, but pinpoint accuracy of the cable location encouraged me to continue. And sure enough, on the next stop, I found what I was looking for. Located over a hundred feet from the source of the signal, connected by cable that is going through few different environments and at least one wire coupling, I found the valve. Really excited that I learned something and was able to save some serious money while doing it. If you liked the video or learned something new, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and share. But if you hated the video, there is a button just for you. Make sure to hit it twice. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.